first of all, we're going to hear from uh, Steve Simpson. And Steve uh, is an international speaker, uh, consultant and author, described by UK-based e-customer service world as Australia's leading corporate culture authority. Uh, Steve has created the concept of UGRs, which we might hear a bit about today, which is receiving global acc acclaim as a tool to understand and improve organisational culture. So please welcome uh, Steve Simpson. Morning. We uh, last year conducted some research and to be honest with you, we stumbled upon uh, the question I'm going to share with you at the moment, which I now think is a terrific question. Uh, the question that we asked in the research was this. If the culture of your workplace was to become as good as it realistically could, how much improvement would there be on people's performance slash productivity? There is a wonderful opportunity that rests at our feet. It is the culture of our workplace. So it begs the question, why is it that there is this massive capacity and yet it is untouched, it's not being tapped into. One of the things that I think contributes to culture not being tapped into is, relates to the complexity of the concept. Um, the whole notion of workplace culture or corporate culture is very complex. I don't think it needs to be that way. And for that reason, I've created a concept which I think helps people understand culture in simple and practical terms and helps them manage it. Um, the concept I've created is called UGRs. The best way to think about UGRs or unwritten grand rules is that they are people's perceptions of this is the way we do things around here. I think there is nothing more powerful in a team or an organisation than its UGRs. Nothing. And yet incredibly they are seldom talked about openly. I put to you, if you are in a positive team right now, then by definition there are positive UGRs. If you're in an ordinary team right now, then by definition there are ordinary UGRs. We are human beings, normally there's going to be a mix of positive, of negative and some in between. The fundamental question is to what extent as leaders are we managing this or is it a function of chance and luck? From culture then to consciousness and corporate governance, uh, my pleasure to welcome uh, to speak to you this morning is Steve Bowman. So the overarching theme of what I'm, I want to chat with you about today is that your point of view actually does create your reality in all of these things. Now let's bring that back to the work that we do, risk governance, leadership, strategy. Okay, we've all got points of view about what those things mean. What if none of them were true? What if it was different? <laughs> so let's look at risk, all right? Most people think risk is all about nasty, yucky, icky things that could potentially possibly happen to us and we've got to make sure they don't happen and we need to manage those. What if we flipped our point of view about that? What if risk was actually exciting, strategic, led to conversations, partnerships and revenue streams that we never ever thought of? Would you maybe look at risk a little bit differently? Now, the question then is what has changed? Just your point of view about it. So you go back to the very basics of risk. What is the formal definition of risk? Anyone know? Okay, it does, it just, because no one reads this stuff. The formal definition of risk under the Australian and New Zealand standard on risk is anything that gets in the way of us achieving our strategic goals is the formal definition of risk. Yet what do we think it is? Because we've bought that from everyone else, from the risk managers, from the, or from the, the insurance companies, that we need to manage this nasty stuff called risk. Well, change your point of view about it. What if it was one of our greatest strategic advantages? What would we need to change so that we could navigate the minefields of risk and create huge advantage out of it? Have that as a point of view when you start looking at your next risk. So, your point of view creates your reality. You want to create change in your organisation, what needs to change? Point of view. So my um, penultimate job is to introduce what, who I'm calling uh, Steve version 3.0, uh, <laughs> Steve Sammartino. What I want to do is talk about something that I think is the most important thing in Australian business when it comes to technology, and I've never heard it mentioned once, not in the financial review, not from any politicians, and it's not disruption, it's the law of accelerating returns. I've never heard it mentioned ever, and it's the thing that's gonna impact 
all industry, all around the world, and it's underpinning the revolution that we're living through, which is a shift in epoch, right? It's a shift from the industrial age to the technology age. And the reason that a lot of companies are being disrupted, and you've heard of the Fortune 500, right? You've heard of that? I call it the Fortune 250, because in the last 10 years, half of the companies got replaced by technology firms. And the reason they got replaced is because of the law of accelerating returns. What happens when you get a shift in epoch from one stage to another is that we can't cope because we don't have unwritten ground rules and we don't understand risk now. We can't cope because the lessons of how to change life in a system from an industrial system to a technology system, they don't get passed on. We're nine generations away from the last time we had a shift in epoch, when we went from the agriculture age to the industrial age. And now we're going through that again. And so these lessons aren't written about. They're not in the books that you get from Harvard. You're not gonna read about it anywhere until it's over. So we need to look back at history and understand the change that happened there. And the law of accelerating returns is gonna impact Australia more than others because our economy is so historically based on resources and things that we've had natural advantages on. But natural advantages are actually evaporating very quickly unless we can underpin the intellectual advantage. So what we need to do is do one thing when it comes to technology is we need to think in 10x. 10 times what we think is possible is the reality. And you only need to look a little bit backwards to see how that's happened.